Okay, so in the last video, I started uh, working on uh, modifying the demo application. We created this uh, this landing page, and now I want to I want to add device. I promised it last video. I didn't get there. Um, I'm going to do it um, in this video. Okay, so the thing that we want to do is use this device gem um, to uh, um, to implement our our login, and so. First thing I need to do is I need to add the gem to our um, uh, to our gem file. And so I'm going to go here to gem the gem file, and I'm going to add in the the gem at the bottom. So support for login device, and it's gem. Okay. And so now that I've done this, I'm going to bundle install. And this is going to then read through the gem file and pull in anything that I'm missing. So uh, done that, and you actually see here it at the very end, it's it's um, uh, pulled in device. Okay. So device has a few things that. Um, uh, that we'll want to use. Uh, one of the things that it does is uh, now that we have this uh, this gem installed, there's a um, there's a um, I'll call it a program uh, that will uh, install a number of files that we need or bring in a number of files that we need into our project um, to support um, login using it. So uh, the the way that you do this is the bundle. Exact Rails generate uh, which I guess now that I've actually run the bundle install, I don't really need to do that. But um, we'll just do it. Um, so generate device install. And so this is going to add a few things into our application. Uh, one of the things that it does is that it actually shows okay what it did plus uh, a number of things that we have to do in order to get things to work. Um, and we're not going to do this. Um, uh, we've already done part of it. Um, the rest of it, you know, we will um, uh, we will incorporate as we go along. But um, you can take a look at what ha actually it's telling you to do. Some things that I think are actually pretty interesting. This, for instance, these notices and alerts. Um, uh, you know that uh, if we put in messages um, and we ended up having these uh, these exceptions, then these things would be displayed. And we'll we'll um, I think we'll eventually get to some of those, and I should leave that for some later time. It's not really important for where we where we want to go. Um, okay, so we've done we've done that piece, and uh, the way that we're going to set this up is we're going to make it so that pretty much every uh, every page is going to be protected by um, by device uh, by user login, um, and so uh, you know we need to do things like make sure that we've we've um, created support for users and customers and that kind of thing in the database so that when someone logs in, that they'll be able to access um, what they need. So. Uh, and so that device will be able to, you know, save users to the database and and so on. So uh, I'm going to run the following command: bundle exec rails generate device user. Um, and actually, I'm going to call it users. And what's going to happen here is that there will be a number of files that are created. Um, it's going to invoke Active Record to create a migration and and then create um, uh, models for or create a model for the users. So um, let me go ahead and do this, and I'm going to call it users. Um, uh, is the uh, is the name of the um, the model that will end up being created, user or users, I, I guess it's, I'll do user. Okay, so let me generate that. 
Okay, so it created a migration file. Basically, when uh, when we um, uh, when the uh, database gets created, this is the 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 file that will be used to define what the database looks like, and then these are the models. Um, actually, the model that will be used, um, and then uh, it looks like. Uh, uh, let's see what else it created. Actually, those are just the, those are the two files it created, and we can take a look at these. Um, if we look under DB, for instance, under migrate. Here's this file, and you'll see here that um, you know it's created a table called users, um, and it has um, some stuff in here for actually it's for. Email is the username that'll be used. It's a it's a uh, encrypted password, um, and a number of things that are basically going to be supported within the database um, for this. Now, one of the things that we won't be doing here is hooking everything up to a, to email to do things like password recovery. Devise does support that, um, but within Cloud9, we can't really set up an email server, so um, we're not going to we're not going to do that here. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. One of the things that we'll want to do in our application is make sure that um, in the controllers that we're protecting every page. So basically, you hit our website, regardless of which page you go to, you're going to have to authenticate. And then once you're authenticated, you can get to um, various parts of the site. So I'm going to add this before action. Authenticate, authenticate user. So authenticate user is a uh, is a method um, that's part of the device libraries, and essentially what this is going to do is it'll render a login page um, that uh, that we'll be able to uh, to access and use. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to modify that landing page that we had created earlier. Um, where is it? It's here. I'm going to modify this so that we know actually something happened. We know who the user is. So welcome to my app. I'm going to add this piece here. Just the current email. Current user's email. Current user. So this is uh, some embedded Ruby that's basically going to display who it is that has who's logged in. And, and we're only identifying users by their email addresses. Um, again, we can add support for other parts of, of a user profile, but for now this is what we're going to do. Okay, so I, I need to migrate the database. And actually, I'm wondering what's going to happen here, because I've already <clears throat> run this example on this code before, or just on the database. We'll see what happens. I may get an error telling me that it already exists, which is fine. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like that's what's happened. Probably telling me that I can't create it because it already exists. You had to put the table. So that's not actually a problem, but anyway, that. What you would really see is that everything got created, but since it already exists, um, you're seeing this error, which that's not going to cause a problem at all. Okay, so let's see. I think we're ready to actually run our application at this point. I guess I'm hoping we are. This. And then, so I'm going to go ahead and run the application. I believe that everything should be a go. So I'm just going to go s b, just like we've always done. Run it. Okay. And now, if I refresh my page. Um, hmm. Migrations are pending. <clears throat> I think it's because of that um, other issue. Okay, hold on. I don't know how to fix this.
bug and cloud nine when we refresh that so we can see everything we need to. There we go. Okay, so I believe the problem is here. I'm just gonna move this file outside of this direction. So there it is. Uh, and so let me explain what happened there. So when I uh, when you uh, when you create um, new um, controllers and you're creating new data, um, a, a new database with new models, uh, the uh, that migration file that I copied over here basically is used to create your database. I showed you here. When you run that db migrate. Um, command. What happens is that uh, Rails will look in this directory, see if anything's there. If it does, if there is something there, it'll run it. And then when it's done running it, it no longer needs to use it, so it pulls that, it deletes that file, um, and um, and then um, and then goes on its merry way. So what was happening here is that we were running it, and it said, "Hey, there's something there. We're not done. We're not ready." Um, but I had already run this on previous instance of this application, so the database had already had that information. So, anyway, uh, by me moving this out of here, that effectively was taking that out. So, um, okay. So uh, here is uh, here's our login screen, and I can put in an email address. Example.com. Password, login. Actually, so that's not a valid password, so or even a valid login because person doesn't even exist. Um, so I actually need this. I need to sign up. I need to do that here. Signed up. And now that I'm logged in. Um, actually, what happened to that? Did I not save that file? I might not have saved this file. Is it supposed to be rendering this? Isn't it? Yeah, there we go. We didn't save that. So, um, so there it, that is. Um, let me add one more thing because we really need to be able to log out as well. I want to be able to see that. Um, See that working. Um, so let me add in the uh, the code that we need to log out. I'm going to put that here. And it's root two log out. So um, in devise, there is uh, so what we're doing is we're creating this th this link which will will have the text log out, and it's going to link to a devise method called destroy user session path. So this will destroy um, it goes to a page or a um, yeah not necessarily a page but a um, a function that will destroy our session so that we're no longer le um, logged in. Um, and pass these parameters. Alright, so now I'm going to load this page. There's my logout. And I can now log out from the page. Um, and so I can no longer see any of the other stuff that was there. And actually, you know, if I tried to go to the, the base page, um, 
it kicks me out. Remember, I had this controller called saying hello. Can't get there either because that's protected. But once I log in, John at example.com. Yeah. There I am. So and it was it's it was protecting the page that I was trying to get into. Um, and I can try to buy it's there as well. Go back to the base page. And here's where I can go to log up. So anyway, that's the that's the whole thing. Um, Again, probably the one thing that, if there's any confusion, uh, the one thing, thing is about the migration and the way that migration worked out. Um, again, you, you basically run the, the db migrate um, a command, and then um, that will um, generate your, actually, let me show you the, Over here, line 60. So you basically, when you run that, uh, after you've first gen generated everything, this will be sitting in the migrate directory, and then after um, you uh, run db migrate, that gets deleted, and then uh, and then the database is all set up. So anyway, that's uh, so a little bit of a roundabout way of getting towards things, but I think we've demonstrated the main pieces here of getting device up and running um, and so that you can protect your site with, uh, with authentication. So that concludes this video.